Gear of the year. Gear of the year. Gear of the year. Gear of the year. What is up, everyone? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for my favorite video of the year. Gear of the year, 2023. We're gonna talk about my favorite items that I reviewed throughout the course of the last 365 days. Of course, I review a ton of stuff, but I can't review everything. So I might miss a couple items on this year's list. That is what the comments are for below. So if there's something that I miss in the list that you're about to watch and you're like, dude, how could you not put that in there? Add it to the comments. Let's keep that discussion going. It's a great way for people to come back to this video throughout the year and see like, hey, what products were some of the best, some of the favorites, what's on sale now. Last year, I divided all of the gear up into 12 different categories. This year, just because I'm adding one. 13 categories this year, and they are best running apparel, best running shorts, best casual gear, best running storage and hydration item, best running accessory, best running gadget, best running nutrition, best items to keep in your drop bag, best road shoes, best plated road shoes, best trail shoes, best plated trail shoes, that's the new category, and of course, the best budget bonus item. Was that all 13? Whew, we have so much to cover in this year's Gear of the Year video. Before I do though, the FTC does require that I let you know that nothing in this video is sponsored or paid for. All of the items are either provided by Running Warehouse, the brands themselves, or I purchased those items for review. I do not accept any financial compensation in any way for any item to appear on this list. These are my opinions. These are the items that I use, I go to throughout the year. No one has to approve it before I post it. You're the first to see it on the internet. So give yourself a little rubs on the cheeks, get them nice and pink because it's the holidays. And remember for every item that I talk about in this list, there is either a link in the description to Running Warehouse, which is an affiliate link, or to Amazon, which is also an affiliate link. Remember, cost you nothing. Both those companies toss a couple coins our way if you do end up buying something from them. You can use the affiliate links, you do not have to, but it does help support the channel, so consider it. With that being said, let's just dive into this thing. Here we go. Best running apparel items. Our runner up comes to us from the North Face. This is the Future Fleece Crew. I have worn this a lot in the last year. The Future Fleece that North Face has been putting out there, it's super soft on the inside. And somehow, despite it being a very lightweight garment, it keeps you extremely warm. So as we approach the winter months, the cooler months, something like this or the Future Fleece Tech from North Face is just, it's a phenomenal material. I absolutely love this thing. It is on the pricier side, but I promise you, I get a ton of wear out of it. It fits really nice too. Uh, I just I just love this top. It's the crew neck, Future Fleece. Mm -hmm, it's good. But so far, my favorite running apparel item this year has been from Rabbit. I love this brand, always have. They just do really great gear. It's their new waterproof, windproof tree line jacket. Uh, this thing surprised me. As someone who lives in the Pacific Northwest, I take pride in my waterproof garments. In years past, I've talked about the North Face Future Light waterproof garment, very expensive, but very much worth it. This is definitely on the more affordable end of the spectrum when it comes to waterproof jackets. And I really like the quality. It fits nice so you can wear layers underneath it. Uh, it's not super tight or fitted, but it also packs into its own storage pocket right along the chest. That's it, pretty small. Stash it in a pack, stash it in like a waist belt, something like that, but it is lightweight, waterproof, windproof, and honestly holding up really well, despite what the Pacific Northwest has thrown at it. I dig it. Tree line, waterproof, windproof jacket from Rabbit. Best running shorts. So I did not do a summer short showdown this year. I did not do one two years ago either. So it's actually been quite a while. I think I need to do that for 2024. Uh, but I do have a couple of shorts that I really like that I found myself grabbing often as I could for those summer runs. Our runner up from the North Face is the Summit Series Pace Setter Run Brief Shorts. I freaking love them. Uh, they're extremely light, very breathable, uh, has some good flexion in there. I believe these are the shorts that most of their elites wear. Uh, so they are a bit pricey. That being said, they have the pockets that I want and need. They don't have the long leg liner. They have just the brief liner, which is nice, a little interior pocket, some flexible exterior pockets on the back of the waist, as well as a nice zipper pocket along the back waist. Uh, but they fit nice and slim and they just feel very comfortable. I dig them. And this year's winner for best running shorts, in my opinion, are from Brooks. It is the Brooks Sherpa. These have definitely made my list in the past. The reason I'm including them on the list again this year is because they're not making like Sherpa version 2.0 or Sherpa version 5. They're just improving what they've already built year after year, just sort of 
tweaking threads, the seams, uh, places where the shorts can improve. They're just improving them rather than creating like a whole new version so you feel like you're out of touch if you have a version from two years ago. Uh, I just really appreciate that. These are the Sherpa. I believe these are not the two-in-ones. There are a whole series of Sherpa shorts on the Running Warehouse website. So you have lots of variety, cut lengths and colors to choose from. They're more minimal, but they have plenty of storage, you know, soft, flexible pockets, plus a zipper pocket on the back and a very comfortable waistband. So nice job, Brooks. Uh, I am gonna tease something though. I'm gonna tease that I have been working on a very special project that involves the word shorts. <laughs> None of that makes any sense, but in 2024, I hope to reveal something very exciting. So stay tuned, I promise you won't be disappointed. Moving on to best casual apparel. This is a category that I added a couple years ago during the pandemic, but honestly, this new category has solidified itself in my rotation. I find myself wearing clothes every day, and I imagine you do as well. If you don't, you, you know, more power to you. But I do think that there are brands running specific brands that are creating stuff for the casual space, well worth your time and energy to look at and maybe consider wearing because, you know, who doesn't like going for a run and then maybe transitioning and going to a bar or a library? Okay, so best casual apparel, the runner up is from Path Projects. This is their Wheeler FT pants. They have improved the Wheeler pants. So I, I don't know if the Wheelers made my lists in the past, but this is their 2023 version, uh, which just has a better cut, a better fit, better seams, better color choices. And honestly, as far as like just regular pants go, this leans towards the athletic pants. I could absolutely see these as great camping pants, hiking pants, uh, going to the gym pants. The materials that they're made out of have a little bit of flex. Uh, the seams are definitely well stitched. The pockets have some zippers, so they're built well. They look great and they definitely fit the body quite nice. So these are the Wheeler FT pants. Big fan from Path Projects. And at the top of my list of casual apparel of the year comes to us from Rabbit. This is their fall high country flannel. In this case, it's on sale, which just bumps it up the list even higher. I just really like it. I like the way it fits. It can be worn casually uh, to work if you are the type that can wear this kind of stuff to work, um, but it's durable. It, looks good, it fits well, it doesn't feel super seasonal in that it will work for fall, winter, and even spring, uh, both from a material perspective as well as color. A thinner, more breathable, possibly even more durable flannel. Um, I definitely enjoy it a lot. Rabbit, you're doing some great stuff in the casual space. This is no exception, I like it. Moving on to best storage or hydration item. This tends to be a very busy category. There's lots of different items that kind of fit in here. Our runner up comes to us from the North Face. It's one of these. They're calling them travel canisters. What I really like about this little zip bag is one, the durability, the materials they're using are freaking solid. But thinking of one of these little travel canisters as an option for a drop bag or a small sort of aid station bag, maybe you just throw the nutrition that you need for a specific location in there. You can have your crew just carry it directly to the aid station if they have to like park far away. I'm just thinking of the ultra distances and stuff like that. Uh, but what I love is that North Face has a couple sizes of this. They're 35 bucks, maybe 40 bucks, depending on which size you get. Uh, and they're very durable. So I'm a big fan of these. We ended up giving these away uh, at Tiger Claw last year for the podium prizes. We're gonna probably be giving these away again at Tiger Claw because we love them so much. Travel canister from the North Face, different sizes, big fan. And returning at the top of my list for best running storage or hydration item, <sighs> you could probably have predicted this years ago. From Solomon, it is their Advanced Skin 12L pack. Uh, this is the same pack that I used in last year's list, it has just held up the test of time. The reason this also remains at the top of my list is because it is currently on sale in one of my favorite colors, the forest green. So I have a link in the description that will take you over to that. I don't know how many are gonna be left or what sizes are left. So grab them while they're in stock at 119 bucks, I believe. Uh, I just freaking love this thing. It does have more storage than the 5L, which has made my list many, many times in the past. I did find myself really enjoying just having a bit more capacity. Uh, so you have the pockets up front, the pockets in the back. You can carry extra layers if the weather is inclement. You can carry all sorts of nutrition, uh, hydration options. It's just a very lightweight, flexible pack that fits your body. Me gusta, me gusta mucho. Moving on to the best running accessory items. So these are items like hats, socks, gloves, all the little things that you might have to carry on your person or on your body during a run that will uh, benefit your run. Starting with our runner up. This one comes to us from a brand that I probably put on this list every year because it is the only brand of socks that I run in and that is the Injinji Ultra Run Crew Socks. 
Uh, freaking love and gingy. They are the toe socks, so they're not for everybody. I do realize that some people are like, can't do toe socks. Uh, but listen, if Courtney DeWalter does what she does in toe socks, I can do it too, right? You'll see me wearing them in all of my reviews, all the B-roll footage of me wearing the shoes in Gingy right there. Uh, it's because I run every freaking run in them. I don't get blisters. I don't get chafing. Woo! Love them. And making the top of my list for my favorite running accessory this year is a hat. I'm a big running hat guy. I tend not to not wear a hat. Uh, thank you, Kafuzi, for this one. This is a really fun beanie from Path Projects. But my winner, bar none, is my new favorite running hat brand from Runner. It is their distance hat. Runner is a California company, which is really cool. They have different styles of hats, but they also have different sizes of hats. So this one comes in a large or extra large or a small and medium. Uh, I tend to wear the large extra large. Kim tends to wear the small medium. But what's great is that we both can kind of fit the other sizes. So if a color that you really like isn't in stock for some reason, you can always get the other size and it will usually fit. This is a large extra large. Thank you, Kafuzi, for the beanie but I'm putting this guy on for the rest of this year's gear of the year. I just really like him. Another secret slash peek behind the curtain is that I loved Runner so much at the beginning of the year, I actually reached out and was like, hey, I really wanna make more running hats because I haven't made a running hat in five or six years since I did the original GR camp hat. Uh, so I reached out to Runner and was like, hey, do you do collaborations? And they're like, we can. And I'm very excited because we're doing a collaboration. In fact, you can get yours right now. These are not officially on my list because they are Ginger Runner branded items. And the last time I put a Ginger Runner wrap on the list, people got mad because how could you put an item that you made on the list? It's because I made it and I really think it works good. But we have a new Ginger slash Runner hat collaboration as well as two brand new head wrap designs that I designed myself available in our store. The link is in the description below. We have a botanical print. We also have a mountain paint print as well as our new hat. This is not our new hat. Our new hat design, you have to go to the link to see it, uh, but they're available right now. Just putting that out there. Really cool collaboration. Moving on. Best running gadget. Love this category. Last year you got mad because I included a mic that I've been using on my trail tested videos. I understand not many of you want a microphone on your runs. It just was something that influenced me. So this year, no microphones. The runner up might be an item that will interest you. And that is from Koros. There's our new heart rate arm strap monitor. So this is something that I just didn't think that I needed. My Koros watches, Garmin watches, Sinto watches, they all have wrist-based heart rate monitors. I understand that they are not always accurate. What I love though, is that Koros kind of took that next step and went, yeah, we understand that. We wanna make something that is accurate. So this is an armband that goes around your arm, your upper arm, and uh, does a great job of pulling your heart rate data, transferring it to your watch, so it pulls that heart rate data and uh, just gives you the numbers that you wanna get in real time. The other thing I really liked about this and what sort of helped it sell itself to me was whenever I would do a treadmill run, it just automatically connected to my treadmill so I could run by heart rate effort if I needed to on a specific workout and see that on the treadmill. I didn't have to do any additional adding Bluetooth device or anything like that. It was just immediately connected. I appreciated that. If you're doing Zwift, if you're doing other things where maybe your watch isn't the priority connector of device items, I highly recommend it if you are into the data collection side of running or sport. And making the top of my list for my favorite running gadget of the year was a gadget that has actually returned to the list. And this is also due in part to an individual on Tiger Mountain that we run into all the time. His name is Alan. He's an 83 year old hiker slash runner slash adventurer. And every time we see him on the mountain, he talks about how he watched my video. He saw this item, he got one, and he cannot stop singing its praises. From Ultra Spire, it is the Lumen 400, 600 or 850. Uh, they have a couple of versions now where you get different lumens and different brightnesses. Uh, so also depending on your price range, because they kind of go up in price. The 400 will be plenty for you. The 600 will be dynamite. But honestly, if you've got the budget, I would highly recommend getting the Ultra Spire 850 because it has two straps, one for your waist, which is what this is. It's a waist strap light. Uh, but it also comes with a head strap that all you have to do is take off the light, attach it to the head strap, and you have a headlamp. So depending on where you want your light source to be aiming from, you have that option with the 850. This has made my list again, because I also wanted to emphasize running with light and running with a safety device. I cannot tell you how many people I've seen running at dusk or beyond without any sort of light source. And if you are looking for the best way to see where you're going and have things like cars see you, 
a waist belt is a great place to start or a headlamp. Uh, in this case, you can kind of get both out of the same package, but I just love that a waist lamp can give you so many lumens out in front of you. It doesn't have the bounce that you would think a waist light would, and it provides you with plenty of light that you might need to get down the trail, and it doesn't mess with your perception of where you are in space. Um, I love it. Ultra Spire, Lumen. 400, 600, or 850. Best running nutrition. Okay, so this category is super subjective. I understand that lots of people can only run with certain items of food or certain calorie intake, uh, whether it's liquid or gel or solid food, I understand that. Uh, so the items that I'm putting on this list are the things that I gravitated towards this year that work for me or will work for me in my future ultras. Coming in as my runner up is from a brand that I honestly just discovered this year. I think people have been talking about Bobos for a long time, but this year I discovered these, the Bobos, PB and J's. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Bobo Bar, I highly encourage you to check them out. They are delicious. The Bobo PB and J's, which you can get at Costco at a pretty damn good rate, are essentially like smashed peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but their oat bar coating is super delicious and their jelly on the inside is also very good. It says soft bake, peanut butter oat crust with strawberry filling. I mean, Come on, get out of here. So our Costco sells the strawberry and the grape versions. Uh, yeah, you know I got these. They are soft, pliable. They don't require a lot of moisture to get down, but it's just really good. And when I'm talking about ultra fuel or even just snack food. And then at the top of my list comes to us again from Scratch Lab. So I included them on my list last year and I cannot tell you how much of this I've used over the last year and discovered that this is the stuff that I love. It's a light flavor. Uh, you can add as many scoops of it as you want to water, but really they only require you to do one scoop. And you get about 80 calories with plenty of sodium, sodium in there. They have different flavors. The pineapple is one of my favorites. They make a ton of really good powders. Uh, so this is their hydration mix. They also have like a high carb mix. They have a recovery uh, protein mix. They do a cookie mix. I just really am enjoying what Scratch Labs is doing. We use Scratch Labs for Tiger Claw as well. We reached out to them, I was like, hey, we appreciate your product. Can we use it for our hydration? It works really well, no matter where your race might be. Heat, cold, somewhere in between. Tailwind was a close second. Their grape flavor was a new flavor that I think they did in a limited edition run this last year. And I was gonna put it on my list, but because it was limited edition and you can no longer get it, it made me quite sad. So Tailwind, if you watched this, you could have made the list. But you got rid of grape. Where's our grape? Where's our apple? Like, give those flavors. Like, let's get going with that. Moving on to the best drop bag item. Things that you would stash in your drop bag for the end of a race or for an aid station that might assist you in whatever needs assisting. We're gonna start with our runner up. And this has been on the list for years and years and years. Might have been on year one of doing Gear of the Year. From Squirrel's Nut Butter. It's nut butter for your nuts. Honestly, it is just the best anti chafe balm that I have used in my years and years of experience of lubing up the bits. It's very few ingredients, it's very affordable, it works, uh, I just, I really like it. Squirrel's nut butter for, for your bits. And coming in at the top of my list of items that you should include in your drop bag is an item that I didn't think about putting on this list until Kim pointed out that while I was making the list, I was wearing the item. <laughs> Uh, which is a perfect example of why I think the Hoka or a recovery shoe too should make your drop bag item. Uh, this is something that you should put in your drop bag when you finish your race. If you finish a marathon, if you finish an ultra, rip those shoes off. You probably smell, they're probably dirty, they're probably soaking wet. Stick them in a shoe bag and in that shoe bag pull out whatever recovery item that you might have for your feet. In this case, I recommend the Aura Recovery 2. They're like a slipper, they're very soft very soft, both in cushioning and the upper, but they're just really comfortable and they're very easy to get on. You can even turn it into just a slider if you wanna make them a slider. I got these earlier this year and I just don't think I stopped wearing them around the house. They've become my house slipper. Um, Freaking love them. All right, so moving on to some of our favorite categories. I know you probably have sat through the last X number of minutes just to get to the shoe categories. And I understand that. Shoes are what we're all here to learn about, right? My favorite shoes of the year, and I divided it into four different categories. Best road shoes, best road plated shoes, best trail shoes, and best trail plated shoes. That new category this year, because there's so many trail shoes that are now incorporating carbon plates, not just rock plates. We'll get to that in a minute. We're gonna start with my favorite road shoes of 2023. 
this was difficult because I do feel like there was a good amount of road shoes this year, good amount of trail shoes this year that just like kind of blew expectations. So I'm gonna do my best. We have two runner ups, they're tied. From Nike, we have the React X Infinity RN4 and the Vomero Zoom X 17. Yeah, this one's up there. I, I, I put both these shoes as my runner up because I think they both do a good job of getting you through long runs, short runs, fast runs comfortably. Uh, they're very adaptable to different foot shapes, different styles of running, and also styles beyond just a run. Uh, the Romero's definitely started running in these maybe a couple of weeks ago, and I have not reviewed them yet on the channel. They will get a review most likely in early 2024, but they are impressive enough to make my list at this point as a runner up. The Infinity Run 4 made one of my uh, trail slash road tested, and uh, I really like them. They're super soft, they're springy, they're flexible. They are a little bit heavier than the Vomero's, but I do think both these shoes will make a great entry point, if not casual long run uh, effort for you. And some of their color versions are even on sale. So you can't really beat the prices that they start at, let alone when they go down when some sort of sales occurring, which is happening right now. So uh, yeah, I, I like both of them. Good job. But my favorite road shoe of the last year has probably been the last couple of months. I have not reviewed them yet, but I did review the previous version last year. They also made my list last year from ASICS. I can't believe ASICS is doing it again. The Nova Blast 4. So I freaking love the Nova Blast. I don't know what it is and what they've done in the last couple of years, but the Nova Blast has just become like my favorite shoe ever. Uh, so this is the Nova Blast 4, the Nova Blast 3, which was on my list last year, along with the Super Blast. The Nova Blast 3s are on sale. They are under a hundred bucks. And I will include that link in the description as well. I, I, I would say grab the Nova Blast 3 if you can find it in your size. If you can't, the Nova Blast 4 will do plenty good of getting you through those long runs, those fast runs, the, the runs where you just wanna feel like you're bouncing forward. I don't know, whatever ASICS is doing, they're doing right. So keep it up ASICS, this FF Blast Plus. It's freaking awesome midsole. And I really like the looks of them, look at those. You'll see a review of these in 2024 as well. Bringing us to my favorite plated road shoes, AKA super shoes, AKA time to take out a loan from the bank because everything's really expensive in this category. And I understand, especially with our runner up. This, my friends, from Saucony is the Endorphin Elite. Uh, I did talk about this shoe this year. This is my second pair that I got because I do like them so much. It is carbon plated, stiff, cushioned, bouncy, freaking propulsive goodness. Uh, so I can't recommend it enough. That is if you have the dollars in your account because it is an extremely expensive shoe, over $270, which is going to make many of you <laughs> clinch. That's why it's a runner up and not a winner. That also made a problem because now my winner is also a tie. Uh, the good news is that they're both the same price. They are from different brands. So you get to choose which one you like better. Best plated road shoes from me for the year are these right here. Starting with New Balance, this is the Super Comp Trainer V2. I freaking love this shoe. It's light, it's springy, has that energy arc plate on the inside, and then from Saucony is the Kinvara Pro, which the review did not make it out this year yet. I have it all filmed and it was editing and I just didn't have B-roll yet filmed for it, but uh, the Kinvara Pro was a surprise for me. So these two plated shoes, same price point, $100 less than the Endorphin Elite that I just talked about. So you're already saving a hundred bucks and you're getting yourself a snappy, cushioned, wonderful race day ready shoe. So if you're looking to run a fast PB in the marathon distance, half marathon distance, but you don't want to fork out $300 for a carbon plated shoe, you don't have to. You have a lot of wonderful brands putting out shoes that are at the lower price point, but still will get you a really soft, comfortable, fast, bouncy ride. And these two are some of my favorites from 2023. Moving on to my favorite trail shoes of 2023, which is also probably one of my favorite categories. Uh, most of the shoes that I put videos out for this last year were trail shoes. And oh, this is a good year for trail shoes, am I wrong? I'm not, it was. Uh, so let's start with our runner up. The reason I made that a question is because I actually have a tie again. Sometimes I just can't make a solid decision and I have to compare two shoes and I just was like, ah, they're about the same. So I'm gonna consider these both runner ups to my favorite trail shoe of the year. But uh, here they are. My runner up for favorite trail shoes of the year are these. From New Balance, this is the Fresh Foam X More Trail version three. And from Saucony, it is the Endorphin Rift. 
Both of these shoes have reviews on the channel as well, so you can go check out more details, but they've been in my rotation since I reviewed them, since the beginning of the year, and they've both been awesome for different reasons. We got the Fresh Foam, which is super soft, very wide platform, has that Vibram outsole, plenty of traction, big lugs, uh, but doesn't necessarily work really well in really nimble environments, so like super technical trails and stuff like that. This is gonna be a great ultra shoe, 50K shoe. The Rift, however, has really nicely spaced chevron lugs, gets plenty of grip in inclement weather. Uh, it's flexible, it's really soft in the midsole, but also works in those more technical environments where you need something a bit more nimble to get you through that technical stuff. So both these shoes are, are comparable for different reasons, but they're both soft, they're both super fun, they're both ultra ready and uh, inclement weather ready as well. I just really enjoyed both of them. They make my runner up. But my favorite trail shoe of the year might come as no surprise to many of you because you've either seen me running in them often on the trails or you remember my review of them as being my favorite trail shoe of 2023. Happy to say that hasn't changed. I was thinking maybe they could get moved out of the spot. As far as bang for your buck goes, you really can't beat the North Face Vective Endurus. This is a $139 shoe, uh, has lasted me many, 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 many miles. The outsole is nice, durable rubber that does get grip when things are wet. The midsole is nice and soft, but yet not so soft that it just kind of loses that ability to be precise and nimble and move you forward. Uh, I've been a big fan of this year's Vective series. The Endurus is no exception. I think this is a solid trail running shoe that can work with a lot of different foot types, a lot of different distances, and uh, yeah, it's just really been wonderful. I cannot wait to see what North Face has up their sleeve next year and, and beyond because I think they're finally taking trail running seriously and uh, it shows in their products and that is what makes me very excited. Oh, but there's more. These are my favorite plated trail shoes of 2023. So I added this category purely because I felt like the industry of trail running was moving forward in this last year. You can see it from TRE, the, the running event, and moving forward into 2024, we're gonna start seeing a lot more trail shoes utilizing carbon plates or really stiff plates to help propulse, propel uh, their elites to the podium. Uh, so I have a tie because there's really only been two carbon plated trail shoes that I've really, really enjoyed this year. You probably already know what they are. So they're gonna make my list as both runner up and as top choice, uh, so it's a tie. From Nike, it's the Ultra Fly Trail, and from North Face, it is the Vective Pro. So both of these shoes utilize nice, soft midsole materials, as well as partial or full carbon plates. They are super comfortable, they are accommodating to different foot shapes, they are expensive. They are also used on the feet of some of the best athletes in the world. They have been tried and proven time and time again, uh, including from my feet just a normal, regular, everyday average trail runner. And uh, I just really freaking love them. If I were to try to pick one over the other, it would be whichever one you can get at a discount or on sale because they're both phenomenal. And I'm really, really enjoying both of these shoes still having run in them for hundreds and hundreds of miles. So Ultra Fly Trail and the Vective Pro. Super fun plated trail shoes are my favorite of 2023. Bringing us to our final category of gear of the year for 2023, and that is the best budget bonus item or the best budget item that won't break the bank. I'm gonna start with the runner up, and I think it's an item that I had on a list many, many years ago. I'm bringing it back because it's something that I started to incorporate again this year. It sort of dawned on me, need to bring this back. That's this. It is a three inch by five inch resealable bag. I think Ziploc is a brand, but I don't think you need Ziploc as a brand. So it's a three inch by five inch, six mil plastic bag. In this case, it has toilet paper in it. So you can run on trails and have what you need when you need it. But what I really love these for is powdered nutrition. So I'm using Scratch Labs, I'm using Tailwind, I'm using all of these different powder substances to get me through long runs. So if you have gels and they have those little packets, great. But if you're using powders and you wanna get them in bulk and you wanna carry them on your run, these bags are freaking awesome. The six mil is important because they're very durable and they won't break on you. You can get thinner mil, uh, so like two mil bags, three inch by five inch, but you're just, maybe the durability is not gonna be quite there. You can get these on Amazon for just a couple of bucks. I have a link in the description. During long races, I love to pack two to three to 400 calories of powder in each one of these. And then in the Sharpie, just right on the outside of the bag, exactly how many calories is in that bag. Get a water bottle full of water, dump the bag in. I know how many calories I have in that bottle. So these are a simple solution to kind of keep things organized and keep things uh, very packable, three inch by five inch, six mil bag. You're welcome, friends. And then my favorite budget bonus item of the year is the same item that I had on this list last year, but I cannot emphasize how much this has helped me 
uh, is just a phenomenal service offered by Danielle Snyder of innerdrivewellness.com. She is a phenomenal ultra runner. She's podiumed like in every ultra she's ever run. I don't think that's true, but like literally look up her results and it's just, you can't help but be impressed. Uh, not only is she an incredible ultra runner and runner and understands what it takes to be a good runner while simultaneously understanding where you might be coming from if you're going through a slump, whether that's an injury or having a tough time with your running, she gets it. But in addition to that, she's a licensed social worker, so she also gets the mental side of things as well. I started talking with her last year after a really difficult mental health year and she's been so, so helpful. And so this year she continues to be helpful and really has helped me dial in my mental game when it comes to running and just accepting where I am, how I'm running for all that it is and not putting more pressure or more stress on myself. Uh, she's just great. She gives you that third person perspective of kind of telling you like, don't take it so seriously. Uh, but also here's some things that you can do to help improve your mental game. So if you have a big race next year, you're trying to get a personal record or you're trying to do something really big with your body and your mind and you need to get all that stuff connected, uh, she offers a free initial call for all new clients. It's 45 minutes, you get to sit down, talk with her, talk all through your journey and, and just kind of cover what you were hoping to get out of it. And then beyond that, it's a sliding scale. So she gets to work with all different clients and I cannot recommend her enough. If she's seeing this video, she's probably like, oh, Fuck, Ethan, why'd you put my name in there? Uh, she's just, she's very, very humble. She got a bunch of new clients last year when I mentioned her in the video. I hope she gets a bunch more this year. So if you're just looking to kind of bring in that extra element, turn your game up to 11, contact Danielle at innerdrivewellness.com. Can't recommend it enough. That, my friends, is it for this year's gear of the year. I'm so glad that you sat through it. I'm also so glad that you watched it. I'm also so glad that you're here and you are enjoying running as much as I am, and especially the gear side of it. Uh, if there is anything that I missed, if I forgot a pair of shoes or shorts or a top or something, let me know in the comments of this video what I missed, why I missed them, and why they're important to you, and why they are something that I should have paid attention to. Uh, this is also a great video that people can come back to throughout the year to see what people are saying and uh, keep coming back. Let me know. Everything I talked about today, there are links in the description, there are affiliate links, they help us out. You do not have to click them, but of course they do help when you do, so consider doing that. Grab one of the new Ginger slash Runner collaboration hats. Our design is super cool and unique, and our new head wrap designs are super cool and unique, so grab those, it supports the channel. There's not many left. We hope that you grab them. The link of the description, and that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you have an amazing 2023 and holidays, and you're ready for 2024. I know I am. <sighs> Get out there, train hard, race hard, or party hardest. We'll see you in 2024. Thanks all. Bye-bye. <laughs>